In this video, we're gonna change the brightness and the color of the light or the intensity and the frequency of the light and see how that affects the graph of the photoelectric effect. And the reason I have two graphs is because we'll do two cases. Now, before we start, let's quickly recap what this graph was all about. On the horizontal, we have plotted the voltage of the collector plate. And on the vertical, we are plotting the current over here. Now, when the voltage of the collector plate is positive and it's increasing, it starts attracting more and more electrons. And as a result, it starts collecting more and more electrons. And as a result, the current starts increasing. But after a point, it's collecting all the electrons that are emitted and then further increasing the voltage does not increase the current. And that's why we hit a saturation. And so we saw that this is an indicator, this current, the saturation current is a direct indicator of how many electrons are coming out per second. So I'll just say hash for a number of photo electrons, we call them. This is the number of photo electrons coming out per second. You can think of this height represents this number. And then when we make the voltage on the collector negative by say flipping the battery, now the collector starts repelling the electrons and so electrons start going back. And as a result, the current starts reducing, reducing and eventually, eventually it stops. And we know at this point, even the fastest electron, the most energetic electrons have also stopped. They're not able to make it. And therefore this point is what we call this voltage, this negative voltage is what we call the stopping voltage or the stopping potential. And this is a direct indicator. In fact, it's equal to in electron volts, the maximum kinetic energy. And if you need a refresher on this, and we've talked a lot about this in our previous video, so feel free to go back and check that out. But now what we'll do is let's change the intensity and the frequency. In the first case, I'm going to increase, or let's say I'm gonna decrease, I'm gonna decrease the intensity of the light but I'm gonna keep the frequency of the light the same. And I want us to predict what the new graph is gonna look like. And I think we've already learned everything that is needed. We've already seen how the intensity and the frequency affect the number of photoelectrons and affects the maximum kinetic energy. Now all we have to do is use that and translate it into drawing what the new graph is gonna look like. So a great idea to pause the video and see if you can try doing it yourself first. All right, let's do this. So let's start with the frequency part. Since the frequency is staying the same, that means the energy of my photons are gonna stay the same. So whatever was the energy of that my photons were, that has not changed. Why? Because remember, Planck's equation E is equal to h into f. And so if the energy of the photons have not changed, that means the energy that we're giving to the electrons have not changed. That means the energy with which the electrons are coming out, that won't change. And so the maximum kinetic energy will stay the same. So I know that my graph is going to end over here. It has to, I'm gonna draw my new graph with green. It has to be over here. Okay, now let's look at what happens over here. And that's, that's all we have to do. We have to look at the, these two things, how these two things changes. Now let's look at the, what happens to this one? For that, let's look at the intensity. So when I reduce my intensity, what happens? Well, as I reduce the intensity, the number of photons that reduces. So I'm reducing the number of photons that are falling on this per second. And if that reduces, the number of electrons coming out would reduce, and that means this current should also reduce. And therefore I know that my saturation current, my maximum current has to be smaller because now less number of photoelectrons are coming out. And therefore now I can predict what the graph is gonna look like. It's gonna be similar to this, but now my graph will look somewhat like this. And there we go. All right, okay, now you try one. In the second case, let's get a little bit more adventurous. Let's increase the intensity of light. Let's make this light brighter but let's decrease the frequency. Okay, can you now predict what the new graph is gonna look like? Pause and try. All right, again, maybe let's start with the effect of frequency. If the frequency has become smaller, then now I know from Planck's equation, the energy of the photons should have also become smaller. So these photons have now become very tiny, very tiny. I mean, tiny as in like tiny in energy, okay? They don't have size or anything. They become, they have less energy now. And since they have less energy, 
they transfer less energy to the electrons, and therefore the electrons will now come out with less energy. Therefore, the maximum energy of the electrons would be smaller, and therefore the stopping voltage would be also smaller. So I know in this case, the stopping voltage has to become smaller. And when I was studying this, I used to try to directly memorize. If frequency decreases, stopping voltage would reduce. If intensity ha increases, this happens, that happens. It's very boring, it can be very confusing. So please don't do that. Instead, always go back to your basics. Frequency decreases, that means the energy of the photons reduced. That means less energy is given to the electrons and therefore it will be easier to stop them and therefore smaller stopping voltage. All right, now what happens due to the increased intensity? Well, if the intensity has increased, remember intensity is an indicator of how many photons are there per second. More intensity means we're getting more photons per second, right? And if there are more photons per second, there'll be more electrons coming out per second. And if there are more electrons coming out per second, that means the saturation current should be higher. So I know that in this case, the saturation current should become larger. And so now I can predict the graph should go from here to here. The graph has to stay similar to this. So it's gonna go like this maybe. And then, whoosh, gola. Isn't it fun to do this logically? Okay, because we're having so much fun, let's do two more bonus graphs. In this graph, we're gonna plot the stopping voltage along the vertical. So not the voltage of the collector, but the stopping voltage itself versus the intensity of light. Okay, I want you to predict what this graph is gonna look like provided we keep the frequency same. So we're gonna keep the frequency constant. So think about what this graph means, what we're doing with the light, and then predict what this graph is gonna look like. So again, beautiful idea to, uh, sorry, <laughs> great idea to pause and see if you can try this. Okay, first step is try to figure out what we are trying to do over here. We are changing the intensity, right? So we're keeping the frequency the same and we are making it brighter. Imagine that, we are increasing the brightness. Our question is, what happens to the stopping voltage? Or in other words, we are asking, what happens to the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, as I increase the intensity, I'm increasing the number of photons, right? But the energy of each photon stays the same because the frequency is a constant, Planck's equation, E is equal to HF. And therefore, if the frequency stays the same, that means the energy of the electrons coming out stays the same, right? It's exactly this graph, right? I change the intensity, but the, the, the stopping voltage did not change. So if I change the intensity, the stopping voltage will not change. <laughs> so it's all about just getting what, it's looking, I mean, taking what we have already learned and putting into a graph. So whatever was the stopping voltage earlier, I don't know what that was. So let's say the stopping voltage earlier was, I don't know, maybe three volt. Then here, throughout, the stopping voltage will stay three volt. That means our graph is gonna look like this. So let me use, okay, let me use yellow itself. Graph is gonna look like this. Make sense? Okay, one last, one last graph. What if I draw a graph of this time, again, stopping voltage versus frequency? Okay, keeping intensity the same. I'm not gonna change the intensity. All right, if I increase the frequency, of the light, that means I'm increasing the energy of the photon. Planck's equation is equal to HF. So if the energy of the photon is increasing, that means the kinetic energy of the electrons will also increase. That means the maximum kinetic energy will increase. That means the stopping voltage should also increase. So we know as the frequency increases, the stopping voltage will increase. But is it going to be a straight line? Is it gonna start from zero? Is it going to be a curve? How do I, how do I figure that out? So that's why this part is a little tricky, maybe a little bit more interesting. For that, we can go back to our equation. There's only one equation that we have for photoelectric effect, that's Einstein's equation. Einstein's equation says that the energy of the photon, which I'll just write as H times F, and this is our frequency on the x-axis, that should equal the work function, which is a constant, plus the maximum kinetic energy, which is basically the stopping voltage, right? And what I see is a direct, linear relationship. And therefore I know it has to be a straight line. But does that straight line start from zero? Think about it, what do you think? <laughs>
the straight line can't start from zero because if the frequency is too low, then it's not able to overcome the work function. We will not have any kinetic energy. We will not have any stopping voltage. So if the frequency, will, if the frequency is zero, nothing happens. If the frequency is a little higher, again, nothing happens, right? So if you start with very low frequency, you get no photoelectric effects. So stopping voltage should also be zero until you hit that minimum threshold frequency, maybe somewhere over here. After that, if you now increase the frequency, now the, this one, the maximum kinetic energy would increase, dropping voltage would increase, and so now there'll be a linear relationship. So now it'll increase linearly. So it's gonna be a straight line, somewhat like this. And there we go. This is what the graph would look like. 